I think I saw something. This is one of the most on all the lists of the haunted places. Let's explore Charles Fort, right by beautiful Kinsale. I'm Ariel. This is Urbanus. Let me know where you're watching from. So today is a nice free day. There's not that much uh, going on. Sundays tend to be quieter here. Kinsale. But today we're also going to discuss a story called the White Lady. Apparently she haunts these very grounds. But what is this fort? Where are we right now? Well, we shall find out as we explore. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. So before we go inside, where are we right now? We are in Charles Fort. It is a few miles away from Cork. So it's one of the other major small towns here. It's also a very major tourist destination. This fort was built in the 16th And it's built in the star shape. Uh, and in the US, this very place. Her name is the white lady but she had another name when she was alive back then during the heyday of this fort being one of the major fortifications of ireland at that time her name was willful and willful fell in love with a young soldier Sir Trevor was actually the uh, son of a governor who ran this fort. And apparently this governor ran the fort with an iron fist. Let's continue with the story as we go further into the fort. So this was built in the 1670s. The crows are lingering around. We got Connor the Crow making an appearance here in Kinsale today. Aya says, oh, is it a love story? Well, some love stories end with a happy ending. They go off into the sunset right after they're married. And some stories, not so quite much. We're going to learn about that. So this fort was built in the 1670s after Kinsale was very vulnerable to a major attack by the Spaniards. The Spaniards came over here to Kinsale and they were actually sieged for a hundred days. They allied with the great kings of Ireland, one of them being the O'Neill family. People call them O'Neills, but they used to be spelled with the U, O'Neill, something along those lines. They allied with the Spaniards in order to retake Ireland back from the British Empire, or the at that time it was the English. So in order to better defend this land from any further attacks from Spaniards or anyone else, especially the French a little bit later on, they built this huge star-shaped fort. We're not going to see the star-shaped pattern from here, but maybe once we go on the outside, we'll be able to see it. So right there in the distance is actually D, and D is an urbanist who was so kind enough to uh, drive me up here to Kinsale and show me around. He's gonna show me a few more spots to 
throughout the day. He doesn't really want to be on camera, um, but um, I give D a round of hearts. D has been watching for uh, about a, a little bit more than a year, almost two years, and is a huge fan of Urbanist and is from the Cork area. So huge round of hearts to D, which is spelled D-E-E, -E, D. Hey, Frank says, top of the morning to you. Hey, <laughs> Frank, top of the morning to you too, even though no one says that here. <laughs> hey, it's raining. Yeah, it is raining. It is raining yet sunny. That's the interesting thing about Ireland. Aya says, wow, indeed, what a beautiful view. Oh, yes, yeah, so green it is. Some love stories go to Santorini. <laughs> Rodol, nice to see you here. I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, D, D is Irish and his wife, uh, Ruby, a lovely couple. Um, as I mentioned, they, they're really not too interested in being on camera. But um, um, Ruby is, is Filipina. So <laughs> I uh, have met my first uh, Filipino here in, in, um, in Ireland. I met a few in, in Italy. Uh, so, who wants to know about this story, about the haunted story? Do you want me to tell it to you? Or will you rather let it be in your imagination? And if we encounter a weird haunting, we won't know why. <laughs> let me know if you want to listen to the story. Aya says, thank you, I'm getting better. Oh, Aya. I'm glad you're getting better. Wendy C says, please do tell. Alfred says, yes, we want the story. Have you seen any leprechauns? No. Last, lepre uh, last official leprechaun sighting, I think, was around the 1980s. Yep. There's a last official leprechaun sighting. Maybe we'll talk about that. I gotta do more research about that. Beverly says, yes, do tell. Okay, we'll tell it here before we go down. Tell it over here. This beautiful view was surrounded with a bunch of pigeons. <laughs> the ancestors of one of Bob's Bobettes. Bobby the Bobette. She's from Ireland. And, um, and she has a lot of her family hanging around here. So Willful is this beautiful woman of the town of Kinsale who falls in love with a young soldier. He's a strapping young lad with a very powerful family. That family is the um, family of the governor because he's the son of the governor who rules this area of Kinsale. But the thing is, this governor was known to rule with the Iron Fist. He was part of the Commonwealth with Oliver Cromwell. This man took no shortcuts, did not take any bullshit. He did not, as the Irish would say, feck around. Luckily, he was very nice to his son. He was very proud of his son. And he blessed the wedding, and they got married. It was a gorgeous event. But the thing is, Willful, just marrying right now into a military family, was brimming with curiosity as to what the fort looked like. The thing is, at that time, women, especially if they were no way related to the military, would not be able to come into a fort like this. But she was so curious all those years, even before meeting Sir Trevor, she wanted to know how the fort looked like. She imagined walking alongside it, seeing the views from the fort because it's one of the better views. On her wedding night, she finally convinced Sir Trevor, all right, let's go into the fort, let's go into the fort. And they come into the fort. It's cutting pretty late at night. And as the sun is setting, she finally enters here. And apparently it's everything that she imagined. 
Just imagine this. That was Willful's impression, just seeing this. She was in love. Not just with Sir Trevor, who she just married, but in love with the views, in love with this beautiful fort that she grew up seeing, but was never, never able to enter beforehand. Now, Willful also had a thing for white flowers. And she saw a white flower growing down in the cliff sides of this fort, because we're pretty high up. Let me show it to you. Uh-oh. There's a cliffside right below us. Seeing this white flower, she's like, oh, Trevor, can you, can you grab it? Uh, it would be so romantic for our wedding day. Just grab that flower. Well, a soldier was stationed. Of course, this being an active fort, there were soldiers stationed all throughout the night. And they had to stay at their post the entire night. For some reason, out of the kindness of the soldier's heart, maybe, or maybe he noticed that Sir Trevor was a little bit too drunk to go down the cliffside to grab some random white flower to impress his newlywed wife, he decided to say, hey, no, no, don't worry, I'll go down. However, him being stationed as a watchman throughout the night couldn't leave his post, not technically. So Sir Trevor was like, okay, thank you so much. I'll take over your post as you go down. So Sir Trevor takes the post as this random soldier goes down to grab the white flower. This should only take about 10 minutes. It's not really that far to grab the flower. An hour passes. He's waiting here at the post. Willful, the wife, goes to sleep. And he's still waiting. Where did this damn soldier go? And he's wondering, like, where is he? Another hour passes. It's already getting late at night. Trevor, of course, this was his wedding day, so he was already all asleep. He was dozing off. He had no idea where the soldier went, and he just went and just fell asleep. Apparently, he fell asleep with his head towards the wall because he was just so damn tired. The governor had a terrible day and usually comes in early in the morning and he was pissed off. Something happened with management and he was just pissed off. He was in a very bad mood. So he comes over here inside the fort and as I mentioned, this governor was ruling with the Iron Fist. He was working with Oliver Cromwell. As many people know, Oliver Cromwell was known as uh, just a very nasty person. So the governor sees this soldier falling asleep on his post, and he's like, hey, wake up. And the soldier doesn't wake up. What are you doing? Wake up. Um, and he still doesn't move. He's completely asleep. You're not supposed to do this as a soldier especially not under the um, rankings of this governor. So he took out his pistol. And according, apparently that was the regulation back then during the time of Oliver Cromwell, took out his pistol and shot the man right in his post. Considering him a deserter of sorts, which, you know, in many where you can kill any disorders as they're leaving the battlefield. That's what he did. Probably not the first time he did that. The governor approaches the body, turns it over, and he looks. And he's shocked. This, is, this wasn't a random soldier. The person right there in a pool of blood was his son, who just got married. 
he killed his own son. He couldn't bear even to tell anything to his wife. What was he going to do? Well, he was a man of war. During a period of English history slash Irish history, which was known as one of the bloodiest periods. So, he straightened up his jacket and decided to just go on with the day. So, he continued doing his duties here at the castle in the morning, disposing of the body, but he was wrecked with guilt, wrecked with just a terrible feeling. And knowing that Willful, the wife, was going to wake up at any moment, he couldn't bear the thought. So he walked towards the edge of the fort. And according to this story, or at least a few versions of the story, he leaped off and killed himself. His body laid crushed on the cliffside. Willful wakes up. She comes into the fort wondering where the hell is the white flower what happened to her husband why is he hasn't come back on their wedding night and she sees her husband laying in a pool of blood right where he was taking the post for that random other soldier and then she goes to the cliffside wondering who the hell killed my husband what happened here and she goes around the cliffside and sees the dead body of the governor And she, out of some, out of devastation, out of anger, out of confusion, out of grief, who knows what she thought of that scene. Maybe she assumed that the father indeed killed the son. Maybe she assumed it was some weird accident. But nonetheless, or maybe she assumed it was the random soldier. But nonetheless, she leapt off in her wedding dress towards this harbor over here, never to be seen again. Until a few years later, when the hauntings begin, people in this fort see a woman in white walking around, stepping through this fort late at night. She helps soldiers avoid from getting to sleep. So she sees a soldier falling asleep. Something, a huge burst of wind comes. Or some type of uh, tremor in the ground. Or they get knocked on their side. Something happens. Apparently she appears a lot to children specifically. So little kids, she apparently uh, says hello to them. And then their kids turn around to their parents and says, Hey, mom, who, who was that white lady? And they look around and there's no woman in white. Who would be walking around with their wedding dress here? She is known as being a benevolent ghost. How, uh, a benevolent ghost, most part. But there have been instances where soldiers who were stationed at their post were thrown off the staircase. And then a few years ago, a group of tourists come over here and they're taking photos because this is now a tourist attraction, which I'll show you soon. I just wanted to tell you the story before we actually keep on walking. They're taking photos here at the windows, having a lovely time and looking like, oh. And then they took one particular photo. Do you want to see it? Let me know.
Tamara says, wow, she hasn't passed over. No, she hasn't. Keeps her company. We have a murder of crows approaching. For people who don't know, a group of crows is called a murder of crows. You know, like a herd of cattle. It's a murder of crows, which are surrounding us right now. So, do people want to see the photograph? Because I got access to a very interesting photograph. Let me know. Okay, so I was speaking with the guard here. Um, they're very nice. I think it's the Office of Public Works, I think it is. Uh, and they run this place. And they have a photograph that they, they'll show you if you ask for it. Here it is. Here's the video of this photograph. Let me pop it up right now. And I'll play the video for you. Was that her in the window when that lovely couple coming from abroad took the photo? No one knows for sure. But no one, well, people, what they do know was that no one was supposed to be at that window. That's for sure. So now let's walk around the ruins of this fort. How long was it stationed for? You know, I really don't know. Uh, but I would assume at least uh, 200 years. I heard that this was in use during World War II uh, because Ireland was afraid that Hitler was going to invade Ireland to go into England. So okay. So let me know if you enjoyed the ghost story. Let's see if we... Um, the, apparently the, the white lady's mostly uh, benevolent. That means mostly she's apparently a nice presence. Unless if you're some type of soldier that she doesn't like. And luckily I'm not in the military. Uh, <laughs> so I don't think I'll piss off the white lady. But uh, what happened to the other soldier? That's a great question. Uh, no one knows for sure, and no one, this is not, no one knows if this is even a real story, but apparently the circumstances were so saddening that the family might have changed their last name, and that's why there's really no record of them. But people speculate that the soldier might actually have been a deserter. Yeah, so that's why he volunteered from the kindness of his own heart to grab the white flower. He just wanted to desert. That means he wanted... They didn't want to go for dessert, but he wanted to desert from the, uh, his post. You know. This was the era of, as I mentioned, of Cromwell. It might have been tough being a soldier back then. So. Especially with a very militant governor. Action Kid says the place will be even more mysterious with rain and fog. Yeah, 
It would be. Hey, Action Kid, nice to see you here. B. Griffith says, I'll go for dessert. <laughs> Hello, Marina. Nice to see you here. Hello, planet. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Even grass grows on these forts. Ireland is a magical landscape because there's so much grass here. The grass here is super thick. Super thick. As you walk through the landscape, you might notice there's a lot of weird shaped hills. It is found that some of those hills were ancient Neolithic structures like Newgrange so sometimes you must think what if this laid abandoned for a few hundred years it'll be completely covered in grass and people will just assume oh that's a weird looking cliffside Let's go down here. Wendy says, I'll take some bread and butter for my supper. <laughs> Wendy, you've been really, that butter has really been on your mind. <laughs> Stay tuned, everyone. Uh, hey, everyone, be nice to others in the comments, please. No mean comments about other people are tolerated. Um... So, lost my train of thought, but yeah, let's continue exploring. Let me know if you have any questions. Not much more history here, but we will be doing a live video in Kinsale soon. So, huge round of hearts to Dee and his wife for uh, volunteering to show me around this beautiful area. And soon we'll be going down there. I'll show you the views. Ooh! Wendy, oh, the white lady's angry. White lady, I come in peace. I come in peace. I come bearing gifts. Luckily, I have a white flower with me. Uh, you guys brought the white flower with you, right? Please, please tell me you brought the white flower with you. I specifically asked... Bring a white flower. We must not piss off the white lady. <laughs> white flower, okay, good, good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Sunshine says the white lady might fall in love with you. You know, funnily enough, we, in Puerto Rico, I actually covered El Morro, which is the the fortification in Puerto Rico, similar to this. It's much bigger, actually. Uh, and... Different story, though. Susie says, do not fall asleep. Okay, I'll do my best not to fall asleep. <laughs> Let's check out the views, shall we? Oh, wow. Paul says the people that built the fort were my kingfolk. Really, Paul? Were they Irish or English? Do let me know. They Do let me know. That's so cool. Hey, is, is your new Irish residence being renovated for you, says Susie? <laughs> is that your new Irish residence, says Susie? Airbnb for the night. This is where I'm going to sleep. Great thing about this Airbnb, you get the extra boat. Beaker says, will I be going to PR one day? Stay tuned. 
stay tuned. Somewhere. Speculating, of course. And look at the little uh, uh, Fort Lookout houses. How do you call that? Let me know. Any uh, military experts out there, let me know. I nearly thought Ariel was going to jump. Oh no. I'm too pretty to die. Right here is where they had the massive cannons, I suppose. It looks like it. Cool thing about a star fort, similar to the one in Liberty Island as well. This is also a star fort. Uh, Island, where the Statue of Liberty is located currently on. Cool thing about these star forts is that you can attack them in almost every direction. And there are little tiny little exits all around it, so soldiers make an offensive to anyone attacking. I find a white flower under my pillow if I have this as my Airbnb. Yeah, that's right. I drink some water because, I don't know, just being in this place gave me an insatiable thirst. Let me show you just a little bit more before I ask any last remaining questions. Wendy says, I'd love to be here at night. Oh, yeah. Would that be considered an outpost? Oh, that's a good question. I don't, I'm not sure if the little structure is called an outpost. This area is probably not called an outpost. It's called a fort. Reason is because it's right next to the city, so it's fortifying just basically the harbor. If we're an outpost, I think it would mean that it's way farther away from any urban area. Thought you walked there every night. <laughs> Donald says, I got confused and bought white flour, like to make bread. No, Donald. <laughs> we need the white flowers for the white lady so she won't haunt us. <laughs> Luckily, B. Griffin got, got, got real white flowers. That's good. That's good. So, next time you come here, bring some white flowers. Not flower, like uh, making bread, but flowers, like why I wear my shirts. The, the grass is really green here. It is. It was originally Tisal. The first immigrants in my family in 1618 spelled their name Sa Sale or Sale. Do let me know how to pronounce that. The I was dropped. It was probably a typo. Oh, cool, Paul. That's, that's amazing. It's amazing you have uh, long-term long family members that come from here. W2M says... LOL, a bag of gold metal all purpose. So, for people who don't know, that is a, I think, a flower company, F L O U R, from the US. No, no, the white lady requires uh, real flowers. Wendy says, Are you coming back? But I don't mean as a ghost. Yeah, I'm gonna tour the town of Kinsale. Murph says that's the River Bandon. Thank you so much, Murph. Tin, the white lady is asking for all of you to do that. Otherwise, she will haunt your dreams. So slam that like button right now. Let's bring these live videos to people who might want to see them. A lot of the places I cover aren't necessarily things what people are searching for. You know, obviously I can't make live videos or too many of them that are called top 10 things in Ireland. That's what people are searching for generally on YT. People are never searching for haunted fort in Ireland. Eh, not so much at least. So 
let's bring these videos to people who might want to see them. But if we get enough likes, it'll start popping on people's feeds for people who are searching about Ireland or heard something. Wait. Oh my god. Oh, nothing. Just some trash. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. <laughs> the white lady, I'm just joking everyone with you. The white lady is actually right behind me. <laughs> I, I gotta get someone to like score these live videos so we can have like a proper jump scare <laughs> with the rising violins or whatnot. Sil says, what is it? Is it a lizard? <laughs> you know, there are, I think there is a species of lizard here in Ireland. Uh, for some reason, it's here. I think someone brought him over. Oh my God, the kid is tumbling down. Hey, watch out, no. No, don't, don't do that, don't go. Kids are tumbling down out of control. Ariel, why is it always a white lady? Why not a pink lady or urbanist orange lady? <laughs> says Susie, you know, great question. Good question. I have no idea why it's always a white lady. You know, I think the more I travel, the more I realize uh, there's not that many original haunted stories. They all kind of reflect each other. There's a white lady in a bunch of different forts around the world, like the one in Puerto Rico. And I heard that there was a few others. Someone told me that there was one on the Philippines earlier. I think it might have been Aya or Ruanam. Uh, there's a bunch of Devil's Bridges in Italy. Um, so there's a lot of haunted stories that are just so similar. But this is a cool spot. I really do enjoy the look of this. Nice use of suspense, says uh, MDN. Is that a lighthouse? Yeah. Yeah, this is a small lighthouse right here. Little teeny, teeny tiny lighthouse. White lady? <laughs> so right there is the town can sell. We're going there soon. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Jacob. Yeah, indeed, Jacob. Indeed. All right, everyone, stay tuned. We're going to go across the harbor. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this broadcast. Uh, <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Uh, may, may the, my, in all honesty, uh, may the white lady find her peace. Hopefully she does. Maybe, maybe she is waiting for someone to give her some white flowers, at the very least, at least. Um, so maybe consider if you do come here, if you are into... 
um, the supernatural or spirituality. Maybe consider actually leaving an offering of white flowers, not flower, uh, to the white lady. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Slangofol, as they say in Ireland. Bye for now. Bye-bye.